Church. We're happy to have everyone here with us. My name is Jen Tabor Osterfeld. I'm the Minister of Christian Education here at Mount Zion. And I'm glad to be back. I was on vacation with my family last week. And we had a beautiful lake vacation in Pennsylvania. Um, so I spent the morning in worship last week, sitting with my feet up by the lake, uh, streaming worship. <laughs> so it was lovely. Uh, today's worship service is full of celebration, and we're really excited as we welcome new members and celebrate the sacrament of baptism today. Leading worship today is our pastor, Reverend Dr. Vaughn Hayden, who will be preaching Christ is Greater Than Sabbath. Music today will be led by Sarah. Our prayer leader is Mr. Johnny Hines, and our acolyte today is Mason Morehouse. We have a reception and fellowship after worship today, so join us in the fellowship hall for donuts and I actually have no idea other than donuts and coffee what else is in there, but I know that there is more stuff than just coffee and donuts this week since we'll be celebrating our new members and our baptisms today. We encourage you to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that in addition, and also in addition, to regularly check mcumc.com for updates on all that we have to offer for worship and ministry. Don't forget that this Saturday, August 14th, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., we have a community celebration with a blessing of the harvesters. Uh, it'll be out on the field of grace. It's a free event. It'll have food. It'll have games and different activities for kids, pony rides, face painting, uh, a moon bounce. There will be live music and more. So spread the word with your family and friends, and we hope to see you there. Final thing I'm sharing this morning is that the backpacks for the backpack and school supply drive are due back by next Sunday. If you have them uh, this week or during the week, they can go under the coat rack in the hallway. Um, and next week we'll be blessing those before they get delivered to Lothian Elementary School. With that, if you will stand as you are able for the call to worship. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your steadfast love, O Lord, and your faithfulness by us. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord. You may be seated as we continue in prayer this morning. Please join me for the opening prayer. Lord God, help us to know you and to set aside rest, that confident reflection, that strong and perfect peace. We are glad to be still to know you. Help us to know you. We need time to explore our own world and time to build the safe country of our hearts. Help us to know us. Celebrate the sacrament of baptism. If you have your hymnals and you wish to turn to page 33, you can follow along in that and what we're going to be saying and doing. Most of the words will be on the screen, but just in case you want to look at that, that's way you can do it. So, brothers and sisters, what's that? Yeah, there's hymnals underneath the, the front row if you're looking for a hymnal there. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift to offer to us without price. Through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism. We acknowledge what God is doing for us and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. I present now for baptism, Diana Meredith Burgess, Lee James Burgess, and for membership from Davidsonville United Methodist Church, Christina Burgess. 
As they prepare to come forward, there they and their sponsors will come forward. And as they prepare, we're going to sing this hymn uh, so they have a few moments. You don't have to rush just now. So we're going to sing the hymn and everybody stand and then the, the sponsors, the godparents, and everybody will come forward for the baptism. Won't you stand? <coughs> Jesus Christ as your Savior, 
puts your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, say, I do. All right. Now I address the sponsors. This is your part. Okay. Will you nurture Diana and Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, say, I will. Now, Leah, I'm asking this of you. According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Say, I will. Okay. Now, this is for Kristen. Will you, who sponsor Lee and Christina, support and encourage them in their Christian life? All right. Now I get to ask the whole congregation something, so you're all involved. All right. To you, as Christ's body, the church, we affirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. We do. Yeah. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Lee, Christina, and Diana now before you in your care? We will. them, these three, to turn around so they, you can see who we're talking about here. <laughs> you got to see Diana, that precious dress. Okay. Alright, this is who we are affirming, this is who we are celebrating, this is who we're about to have the sacrament of baptism for. So now I ask everyone in the place to join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament by answering these three simple questions. Do you believe in God the Father? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? I do. Do, you do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 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 suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He is the second to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He is the to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of your last. All right. Now, Lee, Christina, and Diana, you can turn back around. You swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land that you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them with righteousness throughout their life. The dying and being raised with Christ they may share in Christ's final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. All right, Diana, you're up. All right. Lee, you get to bring it over here. 
Now, I'm going to put some water on you. This is a sacred moment. So, Diana Meredith Burgess, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit work within you. Being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, Lee James Burgess, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit work within you to be born through water and the Spirit. You may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now you can stand and face the crowd, they can see your wetness. <laughs> to welcome our new sister and brother in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. Now, Christina, you have the opportunity to touch the water and remember your baptism. We don't be baptized. I'm not going to pour it on you. But that's happened. You already had that experience. But remember it and be thankful. Amen. Amen. I do get to touch you now. <laughs> Christina Ann Burgess, may the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, I ask you, you three, well, Diana, you don't have to answer this, okay? As a member of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? The soul say, I will. As a member of this congregation, Mount Zion United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, say, I will. All right, now you can turn and face them again. Everybody can turn and face them. Members of the household of God, I commend Lee, Christina, and Diana to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Now, may the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Amen. I now invite you all to show your love and appreciation for our newest members of Mount Zion United Methodist Church, Lee, Christine, and Diane. Y'all may be seated. I encourage you at the end of the service, that as we have the reception, that you come over and make sure you welcome them as members of our congregation. Amen. all the time. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Exodus 31, 12 through 17. The Lord said to Moses, you yourself are to speak to the Israelites. You shall keep my Sabbath, for this is a sign between me and you throughout the generations. Give it in order that you may know that I, the Lord, sanctify you. You shall keep the Sabbath because it is holy for you. Everyone who profanes it should be put to death. Whoever does any work on it shall be cut off from among the people. Six days shall work shall be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. 
Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day shall be put to death. Therefore, the Israelites shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. It is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel that in the six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. If you would please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel this morning. From Mark 2, 23 through 28. One Sabbath, he was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence which it is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind, and not humankind for Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite children who are going to Children's Church with me to meet me in the back of the sanctuary and everyone else you may be seated for our message this morning. tell you what, it's so good to see so many of these children here this morning, and we're so grateful that they could all come, and I know they're going to have a great time in children's church, but we would have a great time in here too, don't we? Amen. I mean, I'm hoping that's what we're here for, to have a great time. Anybody? Just me? I love coming to church. I love having a great time, because I know that it's a, a wonderful opportunity to celebrate Jesus, to celebrate God's gift, to celebrate all that God is and what He does, and Hallelujah. We celebrate, we worship and serve a, a holy God, a, a wonderful Savior, a blessed Redeemer. Today is a good day, I think. Today is a good day because we can celebrate the sacrament of baptism. Celebrate that event where God involves Himself in our lives. Where He calls us, seals us, He makes us and marks us as His own. We know that baptism is a, is a sign of our faith in Jesus. And as we Accept that sign, that covenant, we get set apart as, as a holy people. Hallelujah. But we must be careful sometimes when we think about baptism. That uh, we don't think that baptism is the goal. You know, as a, as a preacher, I get up here and, and I preach and, and hope to call people to faith in Jesus Christ. And as they respond in faith, then they come forward to baptism. But that is not the end. That is the beginning. Baptism is the start of the race. It's the starting line. Because we still have the race to run. We have lives to live in obedience to God. In order to experience all the good and joyful things that God has in store for us. In order to experience the celebration of life. Until finally, one day, we finish the race. And we'll be able to rest. We'll hear the words, well done good and faithful servants enter into the rest. That's the hope. That's what we're hoping for. That's the promise for the people of God. And that's good. So as we begin, I just want to celebrate the sacraments. I'm so glad for Lee and Christina and Diana and the family. So glad that all of you could come to celebrate this event with them. I know it's a meaningful experience in your life as it is for each of us as we have baptism. And thank those who are online watching that you can celebrate this with us even if you couldn't be here uh, in person. And uh, it's just a good day. It's good to be part of the people of God. Uh, you know, I don't know if any of you have been following 
this big event's been going on in Tokyo. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Some sort of Olympics, something like that? I really haven't been following it much. Okay, I haven't really been following it at all. Now, this is strange. Usually, I follow it pretty closely. Every day, I check the medal count. It used to be, you know, seeing how well the old red, white, and blue was doing. But I haven't been checking so much this year. And, uh, but I do know that today is going to wrap up. I think today. And so, hopefully, we'll, you know, we will have done well, represented well. But as I, as I think about the Olympics, I, I, I'm drawn back to the idea of baptism and the idea that we're starting the race. And you know, as we run the race, you don't know till the end if you get the reward. Nobody starts at the, fit, at the beginning line of the race and thinks, I already got the gold, right? You have to run the race in order to get the, the medal. You have to do the events. At least I don't think they give out medals just for showing up at yet. I mean, I don't know. I'll do it. So what does that have to do with baptism? What does it have to do with our topic today? What does it have to do with anything, Pastor? You're just going off. Well, anyway, a couple things. It does have to do, it does have to relate. First, as Christians, we have a goal that we're striving for. We have a reward that we're seeking. We want to get to that point where we can receive that rest. We can get that well done that good and faithful servant. Now the good news is you don't have to come in first. You just have to finish the race. And then you get that, that uh, reward. <coughs> but the second is that uh, uh, this reward, which Hebrews is going to explain to us this morning, is actually what we call Sabbath. It's rest. Sabbath rest. We're going to talk about what that is. Secondly, that this reward is not simply for everybody who shows up, but for only those who run the race. Now that may be a little hard to hear, but that's, uh, that's the truth of the matter. You have to run the race. We're going to talk about that in a minute. We're going to look at Hebrews chapter 4. If you have your Bibles and you want to turn there, I need to remind you, is, uh, although we're going to be talking today about Sabbath rest, and Christ is greater than the Sabbath, and uh, my son was telling me, you know, Dad, this is an easy sermon series to preach because Christ is greater than everything. You can just put anything at the end of this. Christ is greater than whatever. And he's true. He's right. Christ is greater than all things. That's an amen moment there. Christ is greater than all things. Yeah. And it's a hallelujah. You can say that. You're allowed to you know, say that today. Christ is greater than everything. So it's easy to say, but the reason I picked the topics we picked is not because I chose them. It's because what the book of Hebrews points out. Because the book of Hebrews is written to try to help the, the Jewish people who had an understanding of God, recognized how Christ is all that you ever wanted God to be. How Jesus fulfills everything the Old Testament was pointing to and looking to. How everything that the Jews held to be holy and good and just and right, Jesus is that and greater than. And that's the point of the book of Hebrews. And so as we're in Hebrews chapter 4, we've already covered the fact that Christ is greater than heavenly beings. Christ is greater than angels, that is. Christ is greater than earthly beings. He's greater than humans. We talked about Christ is even greater than superheroes. For the Jews, it would be like Moses. He's greater than Moses, greater than anyone you would put on a pedestal. And today we're going to see how Christ is even greater than that which they know to be holy, the Sabbath. And so we begin in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. As I said, if you want to turn there, you may. And if not, it should be on the screen here in just a moment. There we go. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest is still open, let us take care that none of you should seem to have failed to reach it. So it begins with the therefore. And it begins by saying, take care that none of us should seem to have failed to reach it. It indicates right from the beginning that not everyone is going to make it. That's a little scary. But what's the therefore for? You know, if it's therefore, there has some, something before that. So uh, it wants us to refresh our memory from last week, what we learned last week, to see what he's talking about. In chapter 3, he was explaining about how the Israelites failed to enter into the promised land in the time they were supposed to. Because as they were escaping Egypt, they failed to believe God would take care of them. They failed to believe God's promise. God said, 
I'm going to give, give you that land. And they sent out spies to go look at the land. And they came back. There was 12 spies. And 10 of them, or two of them said, you know, Moses, we can take this land. We got God on our side. And 10 of them said, I don't think so. Those people are big. I mean, that's pretty much what they said. We're scared. We got God, but they got a lot of people. And they didn't believe God was able to overcome the things of the world. And that's why they wandered around the desert for 40 years. Because they failed to believe God was able. They failed to trust God would lead them to trust God would get them where they needed to be. And so last week he talked about that and he said that he was quoting David when he said that they failed to enter my rest. God would not let them enter my rest. He refused to allow them because of their unbelief. So he says in chapter 4 verse 1, the promise of entering the rest is still available. The promise is still open. Therefore each of us should do all we can to ensure we reach it. In other words, the rest is not guaranteed, but it is attainable. You can still get. Hallelujah. There's still a chance for each of us. So what is this rest? The Sabbath is, I'm referring to it for the sake of the message. As you go through the chapter, chapter 4, he's going to expound upon it. And he's going to kind of talk about it in ways that it takes a little bit to process. So I'm going to try to preempt that and explain it up front. The idea of the Sabbath initially, uh, of course, the word Sabbath simply means seventh. And it was the idea that God worked for six days, or as we know, six time periods, whatever that left would be. Six time periods, God worked to create everything that was created. And then after six days, when everything was done, he said, I'm going to rest. Everything is good. Matter of fact, he said it's very good. And so he took the seventh day, the Sabbath, the Sabbath day, that's what seven means, Sabbath is, and rested. And then as we read in Mark, the, Jesus said the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So even though God took the seventh day, God didn't really need to rest. He was giving us an example. So we work for a period of time and then we rest for a period of time. And so he says, take this day to rest. As we read in Moses, in the, in the uh, uh, Exodus, he told Moses, look, this is a holy day. You need to sell, set it apart and make sure you don't do anything, any work on it. No, he said, why did they do that? Because he knows some of us are workaholics. Anybody? Workaholic? No one's going to admit that here. Some of us don't like to take a day off. We always say we want a day off. Sometimes you say we need a day off, but when you get the day off, you usually fill it up with stuff to do. It must be anybody, it's just me. <laughs> we like to work. And so God said, look, take a day and do nothing because you need it. It's a Sabbath day, a day of rest, a time to relax, a time to just enjoy. And he said it's holy. And he promised us that, that that's the day we need to have. So this is the initial idea of a Sabbath. Yet, as he talks in the preceding chapter, and this initial story about the Israelites leaving Egypt, he begins to talk about a different kind of rest. As he talks about the rest of entering the promised land, where they could finally be at rest from their labors of slavery, at rest from their continual working at someone else's behest. Where they could have a place of peace, a place to call their own. That was the rest that they were looking for. And clearly, as he begins this chapter, he's referring to a rest that still has not yet been realized. So what is this rest? Is the Sabbath? Can we have one of those every seven days, right? We've got six days and under the Sabbath. That's not quite what he's referring to. If it's the promised land, but the Jews had been there for centuries by the time the author's writing this, so they've been to the promised land. So he's referring to something else still. It appears as though he's referring to a rest that is the ultimate Sabbath, but all who have faith can finally rest from their labors forever. Indicating what we often refer to as heaven, that time when we're done with this life. And the next life is a time of peace and 
No more crying, no more tears, no more mourning. I think it's even more than that, but the point is that he's referring to a rest that Jesus gives, a promise that Jesus gives of a rest that is greater than any rest that the Israelites ever experienced, any rest that the Israelites ever looked forward to or even realized. Jesus has given us a promise of eternal rest and eternal Sabbath for all who still believe are yet to get. That's kind of convoluted. And yet it's so true. And you'll see it in a minute. This is what he's talking to. So he's talking. If you want to talk about the Sabbath in this sense, it's like when we think of heaven. Don't we look forward to that at some point? Any of you? Some of you not sure? I hope you look forward to heaven. It's going to be awesome. The streets paved with gold. Sun shining all the time. It's like going to the beach, you know, all the time. It's going to be wonderful. So this is the Sabbath he's referring to. An eternal rest. And Jesus is greater than the Sabbath. Because he creates the Sabbath. He's the giver of the Sabbath. Or he says in the Gospel passage from Mark, He is Lord even over the Sabbath. The Sabbath is not greater than him. He's Lord of the Sabbath. So with that understanding of this rest, that understanding of the Sabbath, let's see the argument that the author of Hebrews makes. Because it's an important truth for each of us who desire this promise to understand. After declaring in verse 1 it's attainable, and we should take care that we don't miss it, look at verse 2. He says, For indeed the good news came to us, in verse 2, For indeed the good news came to us, just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them, because they were not united by faith with those who listened. Now the author of Hebrews continues to make the argument that the Old Testament is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. So here he says that they, the Jews in the Old Testament, had the good news uh, just as we received it, but they did not act in faith, and it did not benefit them. Well, the Old Testament Jews had a form of the good news. They didn't have the benefit of Jesus walking among them. They didn't have Christ incarnate, God in flesh. They didn't have the opportunity to touch Him for healing. They didn't have the opportunity to hear the words coming directly from His lips. They didn't have the awesome display of love that we know as Jesus on the cross. They didn't have the proof of the resurrection that Jesus was truly God. And yet, they did know that God was caring for them, loving them, and protecting them. Because God was calling them to be a people. He wanted to have a people of faith who would trust and believe Him. As they were leaving Egypt, I don't know if you recall the story from Moses, they were going out of Egypt so that they could worship Him. That's what Moses told Pharaoh. Let me take the people out to worship you. A people that would trust and love God. So the, the Jews, as they were leaving Egypt, as they were going through the wilderness, they may not have had Jesus, but they did have God leading them every step of the way. They had this pillar of fire, a pillar of cloud to lead them every step of the way. They had God protecting them when they got to the Red Sea. They had God telling them, go take that land, I'm going to give it to you. They had God in, in they had his presence, even though they have the person of Jesus. So they had the opportunity to know and to trust God. And yet, with that opportunity, they still failed to believe. This is where it gets kind of sad. They were called to be the people of God because they were descendants of Abraham. But they weren't people of God because they weren't following God's ways. They weren't trusting God. In other words, they had the opportunity to act as they believed it, but they didn't. They didn't believe God. They believed instead whatever their own mind thought was right. He makes this clear in verse 3. For we who have believed enter that rest. Just as God has said, in my anger I swore they shall not enter my rest, though his works were finished at the foundation of the world. See, those who believed can enter the rest. Those who were denied did not believe. They didn't believe, so that's why they don't get it. They didn't run the race. It seems simple because it is. Those who believe get the benefit. Those who do not believe do not get the benefit. But why is this an important point? I'll tell you, this crowd is not responding today. I'm a little concerned. Well, this is an important point, especially with the, with the Hebrew people. 
Because the Hebrew people have always understood themselves to be the people of God. And therefore they thought, because we are God's people, we will certainly get all the benefits. We don't have to work for it. We don't have to do anything. It's just our right. They sort of felt entitled to enter that rest. Because God chose them. Well, Jesus made a people of God who descended not from the bloodline of Abraham, but those who, like Abraham, had faith and trusted God. See, Abraham was the father of the people of God, not because of his lineage, but because of his faith and trust. God said, get up and go, and Abraham got up and went. God said, do this, and Abraham did that. That's the, the, how he's the father of the faithful. And Jesus calls all who believe, all who trust him. If you believe and trust and follow Jesus, then this reward is for you. That's why Jesus, as God, is the fulfillment of the Old Testament promises, the culmination of all that the Old Testament alludes to. He begins to explain the Sabbath. This is the convoluted part, but I think it'll make clear since we talked about it in verse 4. He says, For in one place it speaks about the seventh day as follows. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this place it says, They shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains open for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience, again he sets a certain day, today, saying through David much later in the words already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not speak later about another day. So some of this, as he's talking to the Hebrew people, he expects them to understand all the references. Joshua, David, all that kind of thing. And we've covered some of this previously uh, in this sermon and then some in the last week. Discussing the initial Sabbath, the idea that the rest was denied to those people who originally heard it because they disobeyed, they didn't trust God. The quote from David is a quote from Psalm where it says, Today, if you hear God's voice, do not harden your hearts. See, that's the, one of the key things is, today we can still hear God's voice. Today we can still heed, we can still heed God's calling. Today we still have a choice and a chance to be obedient. Amen. Amen. We still have a chance to start running the race if we haven't been running before. See, until the race is finished, we still have a chance to run it. So today, if you're here, do not harden your hearts as those did. Because they're not going to enter. Because they failed to listen. He says, if Joshua had given them rest, God will not speak later about another day. That's referring to entering the promised land. Joshua led them to the promised land. So he says, it's not just the promised land. It's not just the, the, the seventh day. It's about a rest that is yet to come. A rest that we're looking forward to. So verse 9, so then, he makes it clear here, verse 9, so then, a Sabbath rest still remains for the people of God. Verse 10, for those who enter God's rest also cease from their labors as God did from His. We're up in verse 9 and 10. So here's the Sabbath that we are to seek. The Sabbath that still remains for God's people. The Sabbath where we can cease from our labors. God did from His. This is the time of resting. Hallelujah. The time where we can relax. And it's available for all those who believe. This is part of the promise we look forward to, right? The part of Revelation where it says there's no more crying, no more death, no more tears, no more sorrow. This is the promise of eternal life. The promise of peace and rest. The promise that Jesus brings. And it is far greater than the Sabbath the Jews had understood. It is far greater than the Sabbath the Jews were hoping for. Because Jesus is greater than the Sabbath. And his rest is greater than anything that they had ever hoped. Hallelujah. Because this rest is available for us who believe. That's you and me, right? Amen. Is this thing on? Check. Mic. This rest is available for us who believe this promise of eternal life, this hope, this joy in heaven, the opportunity to just relax. Who wants that? It's available for us who believe. 
Hallelujah. Amen. And here's the thing. It, it, it's, it's something that is a gift to us. All we have to do is run the race. We're running somewhere anyway. Let's face it. We're all running somewhere anyway. We're all following somebody. We're going someplace, whether it's where we want to go for ourselves or following somebody else. Let's just follow Jesus because he knows how to get to the finish line. He, he knows the way. In fact, he is the way. He says that in John 14. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except through me. And that's where we want to go. We cannot earn this. It is a gift from God. But apparently, if we don't seek to find it, if we don't seek to strive it, if we don't look for it, if we don't run the race, we won't ever get it. If we fail to believe. It's not guaranteed just because we know about Jesus. It's not guaranteed just because we have been to a church. It's not guaranteed just because we've put money in the offering. It's not guaranteed because your family may know Jesus. It's only guaranteed if we put our faith and trust in Him. And if we start running the race. Look at verse 11. This is, and this is pivotal. He says, after all this, he says, verse 11, Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one may fall through such disobedience as theirs. Here's the whole plea that the author of Hebrews is making. It, God wants to give it to you. But not just because you show up at the starting line. You have to run the race. Make every effort. Make sure you do not fall into disobedience. In other words, follow God. Obey. Baptism is the starting line. Jesus is the finish line. We'll get there one day if we keep following Him. The thing about following is that He's still ahead of us. Okay? We're still following Him. We gotta follow him all the way until he finally gets to the place where he's made a place for us. And then he says, well done. So we keep running our race. He will lead the way. Did you catch that? I mentioned this earlier in the gospel passage. Jesus makes this rest for mankind. He says, man was not made for the Sabbath, but Sabbath was made for man. He makes this rest. Even though God rested on the seventh day, God didn't need to rest. God rested so that we can understand that we need to rest. And he said in that gospel passage, he made the rest for us so that we may enjoy. And we must make every effort not to miss it. So what must we really do? Simple. Maybe not easy, but simple. Believe and trust in Jesus with your whole heart. And let him give you the rest. He wants to. Trust Him. Follow Him. Obey Him. Be honest with Him. Give Him your best. Give Him your all. And let Him be your reward. Let Him be your rest. And here's the best part. And this is where I kind of throw something in. This, this great rest that Jesus wants to give to me is more than just in the next life. Yes, I believe the promise of rest is in the next life. And it's going to be awesome. But Jesus doesn't wait Till after to give us the good things. I don't know if you know this. Jesus wants to give us good things here and now. Amen. See, that's the kind of God we serve. It's not just the God we're looking forward to later. That's why Jesus came to be among us. So we could have good things now. And he says this in Matthew 11, verse 28, about rest. And I, I really want you to hear this. He says, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. He doesn't want you to work this whole life and finish the race and then just collapse. He wants you to get rest now. Come to Him. Trust Him. Lay your burdens down on Him. Follow Him, and He will give us rest. That's kind of what the, the initials seventh day of Sabbath is an opportunity each day to rest as we come to worship as we take the day off that we could just rest with Jesus just trust him part of Hebrews is explaining Jesus knows what you're going through and even more he knows you inside and out and for some of us that can be kind of scary 
Because he knows those things that we try to hide. But get this. He knows you inside and out, and he still loves you anyway. Amen. That's a hallelujah moment for me. I mean, the point is made clear in verses 12 and 13 of Hebrews 4, and this is where we're going to end here. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. You see, Jesus is the word of God, and the word of God is living and active, sharper than a two of his sword. Jesus knows us completely. He wants to give us rest. He knows our thoughts. He knows our intentions. He knows everything. And we can't hide anything from him. Therefore, we just must come to him honestly, wholeheartedly, obey and follow him. As it said in verse 11, be sure we do all in our power to enter that rest. Now, I don't want to leave you with some worry and fear and doubt because that last verse is there kind of, wait a minute, he knows everything about me? It's a little scary. So next week, you're going to hear how he is going to help fix that. If you come back next week, you'll hear how he is the great priest who can help fix that. But we don't get into that today. That's next week. So you want to be here for that to see what comes next. Okay. Today the point is this. Are you tired? Are you burdened? Are you in need of rest? Trust Jesus. Follow him. Obey Him. Believe in Him. And He will give you a rest greater than any you could ever imagine. It is a promise for those who believe and for those who obey. So do all in your power to believe and obey today. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus. We thank you for your promise. We thank you for this rest you planned to give us, this rest you have promised us, this rest where we can know that uh, it will finally all come to an end, this labor, the struggles that we go through. But Lord, we pray that you would give us rest today, that we won't have to wait till the end, that you indeed can be with us, helping us, taking our burdens. Lord, help us each day to follow you, to trust you, to not look with just our eyes, but to look with our heart, to look with our faith, to look with our belief, that we can understand you have the best things for us here and now. And I pray that if anyone who is listening today hasn't made the profession of faith to trust you, that they would today give the opportunity to say, I want to follow Jesus. I want that rest. I want that promise for me. I want to be sure. I want to start the race. I want to keep running. If today they make that decision, I pray that they would trust you, come to the altar and ask you to forgive them of sins, knowing that you will. They can start anew and begin a new life with you. Just thank you for your love and kindness and mercy for us, that we can truly celebrate all you are, knowing that you want us to celebrate with you forever. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I think, uh, let's see what we have here. We have a, a hymn, number 396. Oh, Jesus, I promised. As we sing this hymn, I invite you to come to the altar this morning. If you wish to accept Jesus for the first time, you want to do that, you can come and pray. If you wish to come because you have something you've just been dealing with God about, or something you want to talk to God about, you can come and pray. Maybe undergoing uh, some physical issues, uh, some, just anything you want to talk to God. The altar's open. If you wish me to pray with you, I will, but I'll just let you talk to God as you wish, as we stand and sing. Why don't you stand? Number 396.
time we're going to invite Johnny Hines or they need to come forward and lead us in a time of prayer. Good morning. Good morning. In your bulletin are our prayer concerns and they're online as well. I encourage you to keep them with you during the week and pray often for those on the list. Um, don't forget to lift up uh, the Dove and Tail family at the loss of Miss Irene and her coming celebration of life on Tuesday. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Good morning, Father. Praise you and thank you, Almighty God, all-knowing, all-loving God. It is to you that we come with our concerns. We come humbly knowing that um, we have no power of our own, but you love to work on behalf of us. We lift up these prayers for healing, for emotional and psychological restoration, for salvation, and all of these concerns to you. And having lifted them up, we trust that you have the answer and we will praise you for the answer. Father, in this world, things are getting crazier and crazier. But we know you're in control and we trust in you and you will guide us and lead us throughout the week. Praise you and thank you, our almighty Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a good week. Amen. Thank you, Johnny. I just want to thank uh, all of you that uh, uh, continue to support our church with our, your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. We know that there's so many things that we get to do and, and have opportunity to do to witness uh, for Jesus. The community celebration and the blessing of the harvesters this week. We look forward to seeing each of you out for that. And if you wish to help volunteer with that, we're still uh, eager to take some volunteers. We actually have a volunteer meeting this uh, this Tuesday. If, if you have signed up and you want to know some more information, what am I supposed to do and all that kind of thing, we hope you come to the meeting at 6 o'clock on Tuesday. Um, and we just uh, know we have some things coming up for the fall. We're trying to get back to our, our fall lineup, hoping things can get started with the uh, Bible studies and, and classes and other things. So we're looking forward to great things. But we just appreciate each of you and your continued support. If you should wish to contribute and support that way, uh, we have several options you can give on your, on your phone with the little PushPay app. You can text uh, MZUMC to, if you have that PushPay thing going. Uh, you can uh, give online through our website. You could, if you're here in the building, we have an offering plate on the way out. That if you wish to contribute on the way out, you can do that. And if you wish to send a check by mail, you can do that to 122 Bayard Road. But we do appreciate all your continued support. Uh, let's uh, take a moment now to, to have a word of prayer as we close. And as we close, uh, after I pray the prayer, and probably after the benediction, we're going to sing a hymn. That will get us all excited again as we leave. When we all get to heaven, number 701, we'll be excited. Before we sing the hymn, though, I'm going to pray for the food. So when we go over there, as I'm standing there greeting people, you all can go ahead and get your donuts and your cupcakes and whatever else you got over there. All right? That sound good? Everybody? Ever sound good? Okay. Okay, I need feedback. I need know Okay. So let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, uh, thank you for the rest. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to just relax with you for a little while. We pray that we would understand you want us to do this every, every week, to take time just to rest in you, with you. Come unto me, you said, all who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. So Lord, give us your rest. We pray that you would help us to continue to run the race, that we will get that final rest. We pray that you would continue to help us each day as we go throughout our lives the many struggles that we face, that we know that you have struggled and you understand what we go through. So Lord, help us in our day-to-day in -day lives that we could just lean and trust you and believe you indeed have our best in mind. We pray for this nation. We pray for our president, all our elected officials, those appointed officials, that they would make good and right decisions according to your word, decisions that truly uh, encourage people to, uh, to experience the fullness of life. We pray for leaders around the world because we know that you are not just the God of this country. You are the God of the world, the God of the universe. That every leader would come to seek you and to find your guidance, your wisdom from your, your words. That we would all come to experience and enjoy the rest that you promised. We pray that you would uh, continue to be with the United Methodist Church and help us to, to do the good and right things, to spread scriptural holiness across the land. 
to be able to make disciples of Jesus Christ and to transform the world. We pray for our own church, our leadership, our, our congregation, our, our community, that uh, the community would come to see this as a place where they can find the rest that they need, find the peace that you offer. We ask that you would continue to bless all the decisions that we seek to make that they be according to your word. Bless all the plans we do each day and each week. And Lord, help us as we seek to live our lives as following you, living as you lived. May we also follow you and pray as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but the us of evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of earth. Amen. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father be upon you all, that you may run the race to completion, and you may enter His rest. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And now as we prepare to sing hymn number 701, allow me to pray for the donuts. <laughs> Dear Lord Jesus, we're so grateful for the celebration this morning, for the baptism, for the sacrament, for the time we have, fellowship we have. Bless the food we're about to eat. Bless the fellowship we're about to have. Bless the time we get with you and each other. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Won't you stand as we sing? Thank you. 